Hello, Casper. This is our first update in the Iron Cosplay Challenge of Five. Now, remember, there are going to be four more challenges, and my friend Jack is going to be putting up updates as well. So, if you want to see me prevail in this version of the site, if you like this one a little better, uh, be sure to hit the like button on this video because the whoever has the best like to view ratio is going to win this round. That uh, is to say, if you guys don't get that. Um, I'm going to be dividing the views by the number of likes, and whoever has the best percentage wins! Rawr! And hopefully this piece of plastic will not collapse and I don't have to shoot the video over again. No! Um, no, 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 don't collapse, don't collapse, don't collapse. Okay. Basically, I just have some plastic up against my TV so it has a decent background. Um, yes, this is the main shaft for the RWBY site, and I'll be going into a little bit, a short little update of how it was made, like, if you guys want to know the details behind it, but it's um, not completely done yet. I still need, of course, some parts like uh, here, the chamber, and then the sight, and then the cartridge is going to be going here. Um, we have a little knobbly bit, and then this is, this is going to be detachable. That's why this isn't all done, because I want to make sure that's all taken care of before we do any of that. Um, the main airhead thing is... No, no, don't clap. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, there we go. Say we're cool. We're cool, guys. <laughs> uh, head's pretty much done. One thing I need to do is go along the top edges and bottom edge with Bondo and clean all of that up so it doesn't look too bad. And to clean up anywhere where there's edges or creases and sand those and make sure that they're perfectly smooth. And of course, I'm going to be painting once I have the entire piece done so it's painted nicely and evenly and has the same um, tones and such. Uh, also. Um, so, I want to encourage you to check out Jax's video if you haven't. I'm going to be going to a little bit of update, but make sure you look at his and see if you like his better than mine. I think I made a good sight. <laughs> um, also, it will help encourage others if you participate to join me. I'd love to be able to challenge some of my other friends who are making things and encourage them to, you know, uh, participate because this is a fun way, I think, of doing things. And i uh, be interested in seeing more commissioners and cosplayers uh, becoming more active in the YouTube community, I guess. <laughs> Plus, it's just fun to make these videos, I think. Um, oh, well, I'm going to go into a little short description of how this is put together, in case you guys are wondering. And I uh, will see you guys next update. Remember to leave a like. Roar! Otherwise, I won't win. <laughs> see ya. For a little short update, I'm going to give you some details as to what it was made out of and how it was made, but this is a little bit shorter, more concise kind of explanation of what's going on. If you want longer ones, I um, can do that if you like, okay? But um, I'm going to try and keep these more interesting, keep them down to 10, 8, 10 minutes rather than my normal 15. Um, but if you want those, if you leave comments, I'll listen to whether you want short ones or long ones, okay guys? for the updates. Uh, okay, so for this, a considerable amount of weight is in the head of the scythe. The, the center of mass is going to be somewhere below a little black section in the head of the scythe if you're looking at a picture of it. <laughs> Maybe I'll have one up. Who knows? But that means that the shaft that the gun is, the central shaft, the gun section, is going to have to be made of a reasonably strong material for its weight. So. I'm going to pick a medium density fireboard. It's a resin light wood thing. You can find it on regular home improvement stores. I'm going to cut it out um, with my hand tools. It kind of does suck. Some of the sp spots I have to go into the rasp and sand them out because it's really hard to get those angles and flat to kind of um, get the right shape. Uh, if I had like a drew saw or say a plain, uh, like a band saw, it probably would have been a much better job. But I'm using kind of basic tools a regular cosplayer would have. Also, I can't make a lot of noise. Usually, I'm doing this at like two o'clock in the morning, some crazy times. Nah. Oh, um, so there you go. Once it's cut out, it's going to be a fairly strong session of the prop. Um, so. You might notice I have some plastic layering for the details. That's called PVC, polyvinyl chloride. Anyway, um, the thing that's kind of weird here is that typically I'll only use it if I want to do thermal form shapes or heated curved shapes, which I do have a few here and there, but not really the way I'm supposed to be using it. 
um, because it's kind of a little bit more expensive. It would be cheaper to use the light wood there, like, uh, or something, right? Well, it's really easy to work with, and I really don't feel like busting out a saw at this time of night. Also, it's lighter. It's a foam, technically, as I put air quotes up, so it's a little lighter. It might cut, I don't know, two pounds off the total weight if I use it all over the scythe. And if I were to change up the wood, so it makes the prop a little lighter. Um, uh, so I have a ton of plastic. I'm gonna let it go. Typically, uh, if I were to cut it out of wood, it would be like my my recommendation. Oh, guys, uh, use a hot knife. Use whatever you see there, box cutters and saws and all the good things. Stencil those out. Whew. Um, so there's a few sections. The first section I'm gonna have to put screws on. Uh, the screws there are put strategically in places I know are going to be layered over because I don't want the scr screw showing, right? Um, but the glues I have aren't really all that great for plastic to wood. I will be gluing it later on in plastic wood, but and not so great. So once I do have that base piece of plastic down, I have a, a, a glue for um, plastic to plastic, which I'm going to use, and then glue everything together on top of that, and it is held together. Yeah, I don't need to necessarily use screws at every single level. Uh, combination work really well here. Um, there are some details which I'm going to be cutting out and layering over each other, working out each piece. Um, I wanted to get some pieces traced out before I went to the next level, just so I have the spacing on the top section and the bottom section done correctly. Um, I want to make sure that I cut out a piece and it's the right size. So what I'm doing off camera between each cut is uh, making sure that once I've got one section in place that it is in the correct spot and the right size to then stencil out the next layer. Um, and of course I'm referring back to the picture a zillion and zillion times. <laughs> um, once that's done I got a few thermoform pieces to go on, a couple pieces to go on top uh, for details. Um, and I use a little bit of hot knife work and all that to cut out some circular pieces. Uh, I use, there's only a little bit of one millimeter there for some detail layering. It's one millimeter doesn't provide a lot of strength. It's just kind of a detail um, kind of thing. I really could have used poster board if I really wanted to. I don't think anyone had noticed <laughs> or known the difference once I got it painted and varnished and all that. Oh well. Uh, so then the head, I'm going to go and. Um, extend it out a little bit. This piece of wood is four foot. I want the, when I drew out the shape of the the the, mu the muzzle, the, the gun, yeah, the gun tip. Uh, I liked it, but I wanted to get it a little bit longer. So I'm gonna glue on an extra little bit uh, with the facing of the wood out. That is um, the flat, smooth side out because it's kind of a nicer finish rather than one of the sides I cut into as a profile. It's a little wider too. I don't need people seeing a zillion little edges of this and that everywhere. Um, we're going to put on a few extra pieces for the details. I'm not going to cut the, the little circles for the details out on the head of the gun and because I just need a little bit of the difference in height and I don't need necessarily a full three millimeters. One millimeter will do the trick so I cut them out, push them back a little bit and then glue them back in place. Bam. Again, we're going to be screwing the bottom layer that's going to be attaching directly to wood, and then everything else is kind of glued to itself. <laughs> there is also regular glue. I got uh, E6000 there, and I've got goop. Um, it's not, it's a slow glue. It takes a little while to work. Um, so it's not great for trying to get done work done quickly, but it is a strong glue, of course, and we'll get that job done between the wood and the plastic. Just needs a little bit more support while it's doing its thing. Uh, that's why I'm using clamps and such. Oh well. Um, I'm going to sand up and round all these edges, uh, and I'm going to do more sandpapering off camera. It needs definitely Bondo to clean up these edges and definitely sand and clip these edges because it's not particularly finished at this point. But we're going to save that for a next update. Remember, guys, this is the Ardor Cosplay Challenge. If you want to see me win, and you want to see me try and encourage more uh, other cosplayers to k kind of um, participate in this kind of fun, be sure to check out their video and my video and leave a like for whoever you think did it best and we will see who wins and we'll have some fun doing our cosplay thing. 
Uh, I'll be trying. I'll link to the video Jack's in the description. My friend Buddy, who's making the same scythe as this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you find it useful. See you in the next update. Good times to all. Yeah!